It's really kind of funny that uh, they'd ask somebody that spent three years as a sol- 30 years as a soldier to give the peacemaking <laughs> minute for mission here, but here I am. Um, and I'm probably the least qualified person here to give this minute for mission. I mean, some of you have been in the church here for a long time, and you know what all the programs are that have been supported by the peacemaking offering. Now, I've only been a member of this congregation for three years, and um, but I do know that they have supported, even in my time here, that they have supported a lot of peacemaking efforts and, and just a ton of social justice issues. Um, next week, you're going to have be handed envelopes like this here and you're going to get more information and in there it tells a lot more about all the programs that have been supported by peacemaking offerings and I wouldn't even be able to touch on those but I do want to relate a story to you and that that is this in 1855 a young man came from England to the United States in hopes of a better future for his family leaving behind his wife and two young children. In January of 1856, that young woman, along with her six-year-old son and her eight-year-old daughter, boarded a ship in Brighton, England. It was the HMS Christiana. And, you know, for that six-year-old boy, I just imagine it was a a really great adventure going through the stormy seas of the North Atlantic in the wintertime, and I, I can just see him standing along the side of the ship and looking out at these big waves and stuff and you know his mother was probably scared and petrified and all that good stuff as any mother would be but for a young six-year-old boy it would have been great I mean I can just imagine that young man when they reached the United States they debarked in the port of New York and from there they actually went to Ontario Canada where the husband was now living the mother died just a short while later but her hopes and dreams had been fulfilled. She had brought her two young children to America, and they had all the opportunities before him, before them that they would have not had if they had stayed in Brighton, England. You should fast forward this just 150 years. You can envision a young mother with two small children crossing the border from Mexico in the United States and wishing the same thing for her children, that they would have hope, that they would have a future that they wouldn't be able to have in, in Mexico. I'm not going to sit here and talk about the le- legality or illegality of their crossing. The point is, they're children of God and they wanted the same things for their children that that woman 150 years ago wanted. All along the trip back in the 1850s, uh, that woman was supported along the way by somebody carrying up her... Um, packed luggage up the, up the gangplank or whether it was people helping with those children, you know, in route or was something, someone meeting them when they got to New York offering them food or water or a place to stay. You know, 150 years later these youth did the same thing for that Mexican mother and children and they'll never see that mother and children but they did it for them and I can just imagine that those young children and that mother felt extremely blessed when they walked up to a water tank that was filled with water and they could get a sip of water and quench their thirst. I've been in the desert because my daughter used to live down there and it is extremely hot um, and dry. So that's what the peacemaking offering does. It helps support things like these youth going down to the southwest and helping immigrants with giving them water, giving them encouragement just by the water there, or seeing them and giving them encouragement. (laughs) And I have the utmost respect for these young people for doing that, and I applaud them for their efforts. It's not easy, but I applaud them. They did a great thing. So I encourage you next next week when you get these envelopes to give what you can and remember where it's going to. It's helping people in need, and it's helping make our country a better country. So next week, just remember to bring your checkbooks and um, be as generous as you possibly can. I understand that everyone can't be extremely generous, but to the extent that you can. I'll end this brief encouragement with saying that that lady 150 years ago was my great-great-grandmother, and uh, her son, the the six-year-old, was my great-grandfather, and he lived to be 94, and 
uh, he lived a great life and I'm one of his offsprings and I'm glad that there were people along the way who encouraged him and his mother and just as those young Mexican people are. So thank you and I appreciate um, whatever you can give next week. Thank you. <laughs>